Hi, I'm Amy Willis with EconLive, a part of the Liberty Fund Digital Network and home of our popular weekly podcast series, Econ Talk. As Econ Talk listeners know, we're all about continuing conversations here at Liberty Fund. So today, I've invited my friend and one of my favorite Econ Talk listeners to chat about a recent episode, specifically Russ's recent conversation with Julia Galef. John, would you please introduce yourself to our listeners? Thanks for the kind invitation, Amy. Good to see you online. Um, I teach uh, in, a form, in a, an interdisciplinary program at Trinity College, Connecticut. It's about formal organizations, markets, and behaviors. I landed there uh, even though I started with my doctoral studies uh, in history, studying history uh, of Sicily, unrest, the origins of the mafia. But, you know, when you want to figure history out, you've got to figure out economics and psychology and a big uh, econ talk played a big part in my intellectual development in that area. And it's landed me with new research interests about liberty and markets and those sorts of things. So um, thank you for, for all of that. Uh, and I'm delighted that you've invited me to discuss uh, Julia Galef's podcast. Awesome. Thanks, John. Well, I'll just jump right in with a question for you. So part, a big part of the conversation between Russ and Julia, of course, is contrasting the scout versus the soldier mindset. So why does that contrast help to explain why it's so often so hard to say, I don't know, or to admit that you're wrong? Russ and Julia talked about the benefits of this in an evolutionary sense. I'd like to hear what you think about that at, from a teaching perspective as well. Sure. Well, you know, by definition, these concepts, the soldier mindset is about closure and the vocabulary is around defending one's beliefs mm -hmm. and so on. Support, defense. Um, Julia says it's, uh, the metaphor is a fortress. The mind is a fortress in its uh, beliefs. So it's, um, it's no wonder then that psychologically, if you're in the grip of the soldier mindset, you find it hard to say, I don't know. Now I'm, um, I'm not so sure that that, um, I, I guess, I guess uh, it, it has evolutionary value if, if it's a part of human nature, or either that or it's just a side effect of things that have evolutionary value. Um, I think, I don't think there's any reason to think it's maladaptive in the evolutionary sense. I mean, uh, people who uh, never make it very much to the scout mindset usually survive to adulthood, have offspring, their, their offspring have offspring, you know, and if that's the measure of, uh, you know, evolutionary adaptiveness or fitness. So it's, uh, the real question is, uh, would we individually, might we flourish more? You know, so let's go beyond evolution. <laughs> might we flourish more as individuals if we get a little more past the soldier mindset and embrace the scout mindset, find our way to saying um, from time to time, I don't know, or even, or even I was wrong. And thank you for helping me get a little closer uh, to being less wrong. So that's, uh, you know, I think, I think that if, if you can learn to uh, have enough confidence in your um, outlook on life, uh, and, and your values, this is an important thing, the distinction between cognition and motivation, right? So, you know, the key is, uh, you know, uh, honest, you know, the honest and healthy intellectual approaches say, I've got my values and don't take those from me, right? Uh, but I want to find the, the, the most accurate um, picture or map, as Julia Galef says, mm -hmm. Of, of facts and cause and effect and social mechanisms. That is, I want my cognition to be accurate so that I have a better chance of actually achieving my values, whether they're my values for self-improvement or my values for helping others and altruism or for thinking about the public good and voting uh, wisely. So, you know, I think that's the conversation that Julia Galef helps us get to. Uh, if you, you know, if you want, if you want to flourish, if you want your values to have a fighting chance in the modern world, 
then try and form an accurate map of facts and cause and effect and uh, social mechanisms so that you have a better chance of finding the right path to get from your values to policies or behaviors. I saw an important distinction that, 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 that I would um, emphasize uh, from, from, the, from the econ talk conversation is the distinction between beliefs and motivations, cognition and, and uh, goals or values. And you're gonna, he's much more likely to, to find, to, to be able to achieve your goals, your most, your noblest goals, not just your self-interested goals, if you form an accurate map of the world around you. And that means, you know, giving others the same fair chance in that regard. So I'm glad you used the analogy of the map in there. Uh, and one of the reasons that I'm thinking about teaching is this notion of the map and the role that facts play in laying out your map, laying out your plan, whether it's to get to the grocery store in the most timely manner or whether to get to your noblest virtues, as you said. So in the, in the avocation of teaching, which is more important, scout or soldier? Well, uh, I'd say the first rule as a teacher is start from where the student is. And if the student is in a soldier mindset, then you try and open up new vistas. You, you help the student see that um, adjusting your cognition, your map, doesn't mean that you have to lose your principles or your values. It doesn't question your identity. You might think it does. You might see your you might see your cognition, your beliefs, and so on. Your the cognitive side and the and the values or motivations or principles side. You might see them as a package deal if you're you know you're 18, and you're fine you know and you're establishing your autonomy and you're in this complicated new institution. Uh, but you know teachers first have to start from where the student is, then help her to make that distinction between her principles, her values on the one hand, and her map on the other. Right, and then help her get a better map. Um, one thing that I think is a blind spot in a lot of higher education is uh, faculty advising. And oh. uh, often faculty advising is um, an afterthought. Sometimes it's even an, uh, an exercise in drawing water to your department's well, <laughs> rather than starting from where the student's student is and her values and her interests and her aspirations figuring that person out. So um, I guess, um, you know, a higher education could stand to do better, or at least more systematically, in, in um, helping students to find a scout mindset and still be true to themselves. That's really lovely. Uh, I also really like your analogy to advising, right? I mean, I think the incentives are, are set up to draw to, to draw water to the well, um, as you suggested. But also maybe that was a trick question or an unfair question that I asked because of course teaching is much more than you know teaching in the classroom, right? So I'm glad you included things like yeah. faculty advising, right? I mean, I, I chastise people all the time for talking about education uh, strictly with regard to schooling, right? I mean, education and teaching can come in a variety of, a, a variety of ways. And I've learned a lot. Um, from talking to you today and all of the conversations we've had over the years. So thanks so much for joining me today and helping us to continue this Econ Talk conversation. It's been a lot of fun and compliments to Julia Galev. I admire her project, uh, Rationally Speaking, her, po her, her podcast and the Econ Talk episode was first rate. Indeed, Good and talk. we'll put links up to Julia's podcast as well. Thanks, John.